Happy Easter. I am so glad that we have this chance to celebrate Easter together. You know, we're in the fifth week of our COVID-19 exile, and we want to make sure that we try to keep things as normal as possible. One of the things that we do on Easter each year at Concordia is a special greeting that goes all the way back to the early church. When Christians would encounter one another on Easter, one would say to the other, Christ is risen. The response is, he is risen indeed. And then together they would say, Alleluia, which means praise be to God. So let's try it. Christ is risen. Alleluia. You sound amazing. You know, there's one other thing that we're going to do that's kind of a special part of this Easter celebration. We're going to ask you to take an Easter selfie. So whoever's there with you watching this service, gather around whatever screen you're watching the service on and take a selfie. So maybe it's you and your whole family. Maybe it's you all by yourself. But when you're done, send that picture to us. You can send it to easter at concordia.cc. You can post it to Concordia's social media. But we're going to gather all of those photos. And then when we finally have the chance to be together again, we're going to do something very special with it. So I hope you'll be part of that. Easter at concordia.cc. By the way, when you post your photo to social media, use the hashtag Easter together. Now, dear friends, let's join together and pray as we continue in worship. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for the celebration of our victory through the death and the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, as we continue in worship, strengthen us. Allow us to be bound together by the power of your Spirit in this wonderful occasion. And we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Amen.
happy Easter, everyone. You know the line from that song, what can stop the Lord Almighty? Easter answers that with assurance. There is nothing, not even death, that can stop our Lord. And so it's in his name that we begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, the Bible says that as we worship God, we do so not as perfect people, but as very imperfect people, as broken people who are stained by sin. And yet this promise is ours when we confess our sins before our God. He is right there to forgive us of our sins. And so we take a moment now to confess our sins before him. Heavenly Father, we know that we don't measure up to your standards of righteousness. We sin against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. We mess so many things up. And yet, Father, we also trust that when we bring our sins before you, you don't judge us in them, but forgive us of them. We thank you that because Christ has died and Christ has risen, the promise of grace belongs to us. And so whatever sins we're struggling with in our hearts, we take a moment of silence to name those before you now. In 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul gives us kind of an executive summary of the Christian faith. He says, what I've received from the Lord himself, I want to pass along to you that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and after three days, he rose. You know, because of Jesus' death and by his resurrection, we have the promise that forgiveness is ours. Our sins have been conquered by Jesus on the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The life that Jesus gives to us is the life that so many people experienced 2,000 years ago on this day when Christ rose from the dead. You know, one of the first witnesses to the resurrection was one of Jesus' dear friends, Mary Magdalene. And we read her story in the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She's turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. You know, what Mary Magdalene witnessed, we have the privilege of celebrating today that Christ is risen from the dead. This has been the confession of the Christian church now for 2,000 years. And so together we use an ancient confession of the church to confess our faith in Jesus. Speak these words with me from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, here's a special message just for the kids from our youth pastor, Ben Schrank. Hey boys and girls, welcome to today's children's message. I'm so glad that you're with us in this way and I'm excited to celebrate Easter with you here today. But I need your help today. I'm having a hard time remembering how do we celebrate Easter? Is there something specific that I'm supposed to wear? Do you remember? Is it this? Is this what I wear? Oh, wait. No, this is for the other big holiday. That's This is for Christmas. Um, not this. Is it... Is it a time that you dress up like your favorite food? Ooh, I love tacos. Is this right? No. Is it... Is it time that you dress up like your favorite Bible character? Samson? Who? <gasps> Who? No? This isn't it either? Is it kind of like Shark Week? No? Then what is it? Is it wearing bunny ears on my head? Is that what Easter's all about? I think it's a little bit closer, but it still doesn't feel right, does it? Well, maybe you can help me. What are we celebrating when we celebrate Easter? What happened on Easter? I think I heard somebody say it. You're right. That, wow. We're celebrating that Jesus died and rose again. That the tomb is empty. Every day is a celebration of new life in him. And that is good news. No matter what costume we have on, no matter what clothes we have on, you and I put on Jesus. And we put on Jesus, we put on life and life eternal. Boys and girls, can you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your love. 
and for sending Jesus to be our Savior. Thank you that we can celebrate new life every day. Help me remember that you love me. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. Happy Easter. Thank you so much for celebrating with us on this Easter. We are delighted to have you streaming with us today. And uh, thank you so much for your support of this ministry over the many years. And by the way, if you'd like to give to this ministry, there are a couple of different ways you can do so. Uh, you can give online if you're streaming with us on your laptop or on your desktop. You'll see a button that says give. Just click on that and that'll take you directly to our giving page. You can also go to our website, concordia.cc. Or if you'd prefer, you can also give by writing a check and dropping it in the mail. Just send it to Concordia Lutheran Church at the address that's right here on your screen. Now, we're a church who loves to pray, and we would be delighted to pray with you. If there's any way that we can pray for you, you can send your prayer request just by going to concordia.cc slash prayer, or if you want to pray with someone right now, we have prayer partners who are standing by. Just call the number on your screen and they'll be praying with you as soon as you pick up the phone and you give them your prayer request. Thank you so much for celebrating with us on this Easter and God bless you. I'm going to love you no matter what and I'm gonna stay here and never give up You can build these walls but they won't stack up and I'm not gonna let anything come between us
enough to tear down the gates of hell You should know by now with a love like that You should know by now with a love like that You can't hold me, baby If Christ's love is strong enough to conquer the gates of hell, his love is most definitely strong enough to hear us when we pray. And so we go to him in prayer now. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this incredible celebration. We thank you for the promise that by death, your son has conquered death when he rose from the grave. Father, as we look around our world, we see so many reasons to be concerned and troubled. And yet, Father, we take heart in your promise that your son has all of this under his care and control. And so, Father, whatever we're struggling with, whether it be personal or spiritual or emotional, we entrust it to your care, knowing that you are big enough to handle anything that we throw your way. Father, we ask you to be with our world. We are in a world of hurt. This pandemic has turned so many things upside down. And so we trust in you, knowing that ultimately the end is sure. Because Christ is risen, we will rise. We thank you for that amazing and incredible promise, and we pray in the name of the risen one, Jesus our Savior. And now together we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. I want to encourage you guys to sing this great hymn of faith with us. Let's go. Christ is risen today, ah, hallelujah, our triumphant holy day, ah, hallelujah, who did once upon the cross, ah, hallelujah, suffer to
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You know, what a wonderful opportunity to celebrate. And in addition to being a wonderful celebration, a holiday that we look forward to, this is also a really awesome time of year. Now, I know in some of the northern climates, it's maybe not quite as warm, but here in South Texas, spring is fully sprung. And we're seeing all kinds of beautiful flowers, all kinds of of budding trees. The grass is green. And on top of everything else that's going on, we've had some rain and some thunderstorms. So things look amazing. There's absolutely no awareness on the part of creation that we have a pandemic threatening us day in and day out. In fact, it's so beautiful that I ask some of our members if they would be willing to send us pictures. If they send us pictures of their flower gardens, of their yards, of the fields around their homes, just take a look at all of these beautiful images. Aren't those amazing? Absolutely beautiful. Now, these are beautiful scenes, but these beautiful scenes haven't tended themselves. In fact, when you see the gardens, when you see the lawns, when you see the fields, you know that someone has taken great care to help them become beautiful. That goes all the way back to the book of Genesis, all the way back when Adam and Eve are in the garden and they they rebel against God, they eat that fruit that was forbidden to them. There's a curse from Genesis chapter 3. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. In other words, from that point on, it was going to be a struggle to work the ground and to make it become what it's supposed to be. And what's fascinating is that, that for us now, we can feel like we are under a curse. I've heard people talk about us being under a plague. I've heard about pestilence. It can feel like we're under a curse. Now, let's be clear. When I'm talking about a curse, I'm not talking about something that is happening because someone did something. I'm talking about something more general, and it has to do with the curse over all of creation that came as a result of our sin. You see, COVID-19 is something that, that is happening in our world. It's not the consequence of something that someone chose to do. It's really about the fact that we have a world that is broken by sin. That things don't happen the way God intended them to. That they don't exist in that perfect harmony. It doesn't take care of itself. That there is a brokenness and a reality that comes and flows from that very first curse. In that very first garden that God created, that garden where he put Adam and Eve to tend it and take care of it, things were perfect. There were no thorns. There were no thistles. Everything worked exactly the way it was supposed to. You know, I want you to see some other pictures. These are uh, beautiful yards. Take a look at this first one. Isn't that awesome? I mean, everything looks perfect. How about this one? Talk about a flower garden, right? Spectacular. This is my favorite. Wouldn't you love to have this in your backyard? Not a beautiful waterfall and everything looks perfect. The thing that I want you to understand about these last three pictures, all of them are fake. Now, I'm not saying they don't really exist. What I'm saying is the grass is fake, the flowers are fake, artificial for those of you with a sensitivity to that. But the fact is, they don't require tending. They don't grow. They're not natural. They're beautiful, but they're fake. When it comes to our real world, we still have to cut the grass. When it comes to our flower gardens, we still have to tend those gardens and pull weeds. When it comes to the creation, it is still a creation that is struggling under that curse. But there's something about that curse that looms even more darkly. And that reality is that that while you and I walk on top of the grass, there will be a time when we are gone and that grass grows over us. See, what this curse is all about, what's at its heart is that Adam is going to die, that he's going to go from a garden to a grave. Dear friends, that's why we so desperately need Easter. And so that brings us to our text. Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' dearest friends, one of the the people who followed him and walked with him, heard his teaching, thought that he was the Messiah. Mary Magdalene is headed to Jesus' tomb. See, she knows the curse. 
like you and I know the curse. She knows that, that no one lives forever. She knows that everyone dies. And so she's going to pay her respects and care for the body of this beloved friend and teacher. But when she gets there, it's devastating. When she arrives at her beloved friend and teacher's tomb, the grave has been robbed. Now, this wasn't something unusual. This happened all the time in this particular age. But can you imagine how Mary felt? She's devastated by this. In fact, this happens so commonly that, that we have a, an ordinance from Emperor Claudius that literally talks about people who rob graves, and it says, grave robbers, the offenders, shall be sentenced to capital punishment. It was such a problem that they finally said anyone who robs a grave is going to die as a consequence of their offense. Well, that's little consolation to Mary. You can imagine her thinking to herself, everything that he went through, everything that he endured, all that Jesus suffered, and now all she wants for him is peace. You know the, the phrase, right? R.I.P., rest in peace. That's what she wants for her friend. That's what she wants for her teacher, for it to finally be over, and he can't even have that. And so she's heartbroken. John 20, verse 11, it says, Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. But here's what's amazing. Just a little further examination, just a little more crime scene investigation, and everything begins to change. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They ask her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Now get this. Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Now Mary thinks that she's gone to visit a grave, to care for her friend's body in a tomb. But as it turns out, she's really in a garden. See, Jesus isn't under the grass. He's alive. He's not trapped behind a giant tombstone. He has risen from the dead. You know, in Genesis chapter 3, the story goes from a garden to a grave. On Easter, the story is absolutely turned upside down. It's reversed, and it goes from a grave to a garden. Dear brothers and sisters, isn't that the promise we desperately need? Don't we need an extraordinary reversal that takes the circumstance as we see it with fear and anguish and, and all kinds of struggle? We need to see that reversed. We see, need to see hope spring out of this graveyard of fear to bring hope to our world. You know, think of it. All of these shelter-in-place orders can kind of feel like we're trapped, right? Kind of make us feel cabin fever, even claustrophobic, like we're in a grave. We live in fear because there's this virus out there that's out to get us. In a very real way, that's how Jesus' disciples felt. John 20, verse 19, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, these disciples are literally sheltering in place. And they're scared to death. And they couldn't see their enemy, but they knew they were out there lurking. They were terrified by every sound because they knew that they were going to be next. See, they understood that the anger and the rage and the malice that these religious leaders had against Jesus, it was contagious. And it was going to spread to them as well. So imagine the scene on that very first Easter while the disciples were sheltering in place and they are terrified, listening for any creak, any sound whatsoever, Jesus came and stood among them. 
He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. See, Jesus has come. He, he's arrived. And he's arrived to set the disciples free from their fear. He's arrived to set them free from their shelter in place. He's arrived to give them life, real life. Brothers and sisters, here's what I want you to know. As you and I are celebrating Easter in this unique time that none of us have ever experienced before, I want you to get this clearly. Jesus will come to set us free as well. He will set us free from our tomb of fear to an invisible disease. He will set us free from our shelter-in-place grave and restore us to life. But he won't stop there. He will set us free from the sin and shame that isolates us from ourselves and from our God. He will set us free from the snares of the evil one that have kept us from that close relationship with our Heavenly Father. And when the time comes, when that time finally comes, He will set us free from this life and all of its struggles to live eternally in the place He's prepared for us. Dear friends, I want you to understand, Easter changes everything. And it brings hope to every life circumstance. I had a great experience the other day. We were gathering the masks that people, our Threads of Love ladies, had been sewing to provide to first responders and medical personnel. And so we were doing all of the social distancing and taking great care to make sure that they could kind of drive up and drop the masks in. But I have to tell you, it was wonderful. Because I was having the chance to see some of our beloved Concordia family, and I had a chance to say hi to them. And while I didn't get to touch them and I didn't get to hug them, it was wonderful just to to be in close proximity again. It was a delight just to to sort of be together, even at a distance, because I love those people. You know, in these last few weeks, Pastor Zach and I have been doing a noontime Bible study on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's been a lot of fun, and it's always fun when I get to do Bible study with Zach. But I have to tell you, as as we're waiting for the Bible study to begin, and I'm seeing the names of our beloved family members from Concordia and friends from around the country, as I'm seeing those names and having a chance to greet them, even though they can't greet me back, I find my heart just filled to overwhelming because it's so wonderful to be with those people even when we can't be together. This difficult time is not, hear me, it is not the end of the story. There is so much more waiting for us, so much more that God has planned that we simply cannot see. You know, the Apostle John, who is also the one who writes this Gospel of John that we've been looking at this morning, he wrote the very last book of the Bible called Revelation. Now, Revelation is is an amazing book, and in the book of Revelation, John has this incredible vision of what things are going to look like in the future. Revelation chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and from the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. And I love that vision. Think about how incredible that is, and think about what it says for us. You know, the fact is, when this is all over, it's going to be amazing. When you and I are able to gather together again, when when we're able to come together, maybe you found Concordia, you live in San Antonio, you found Concordia, and you're going to be able to come here and be part of this family. Maybe we're going to be in this celebration time where we're all gathered together, and the COVID-19 threat is over, and it's going to be an amazing homecoming. We've started thinking about it, started imagining what that homecoming celebration might look like. But I promise you one thing, no matter how awesome that is, no matter how wonderful it is to see people and to shake hands and to hug, no matter how incredibly fulfilling it is to sit next to the people we've been next to in the pew for years, no matter how wonderful that homecoming celebration is, it will be nothing compared to what it's like when you and I are gathered around the throne of the Lamb. When the the leaves of that tree have given the ultimate healing to all of the nations. 
when we celebrate that the curse is broken forever. And the Lamb, Jesus, is seated on his throne. Dear friends, that's what Easter is all about, and that's why we so desperately need to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this incredible privilege of knowing by the power of your Spirit through this Apostle John the message of your resurrection of being able to see and imagine it in a brand new way. This COVID-19 circumstances put us in a different frame of mind and we can understand what the disciples experienced in a whole new way. But it also reminds us of that incredible victory that is ours, not just an earthly victory, not just deliverance from COVID-19, not just freedom from our shelter-in-place orders. The victory we have when the curse is broken and we celebrate at the foot of your throne. Lord, bless us and strengthen us in that Easter power. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And as you go from this time of worship, as you go into the rest of your Easter celebration, shine like stars in the universe as you hold out this message of life. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.